That's RJ Nordland, brewmaster at Bare Bones Brewery in Oshkosh, Wisconsin. Today we're talking about the brewery and the beer RJ is making there. Welcome to Oshkosh Beer. <laughs> Let's just uh, shoot the ship for a while and see what it wants. Okay, so um, we're going to talk about beers, obviously, you know. But um, I want to do a little recap because I was thinking about this the other day. So, Bare Bones, uh, the tap room, opened in May. 2015. Uh, July of 2015, the first beers started being brewed here. Mm -hmm. And then in March of 2016, you took over as the brewmaster of Bare Bones. And I remember talking to you at that point, and you were pretty clear that you wanted to take uh, things in a little bit different direction, flavor profile wise, and yeah. the like. Um, now you're eight months later. How yeah. do you feel about it? <laughs> great. I feel great. Do you, uh, is it, is it uh, where you want it to be yet, or are you still? Oh, we're getting there. We're getting there. I think all the beers I've released, I'm really proud of. And, uh, yeah, now we just need to get more people in the tap room. We need more bars buying our kegs, and, and then we're going to be good. Well, that's something, uh, so you guys are getting pretty heavily into distribution now. Yeah. Um, and you're distributing around the Oshkosh area, mm -hmm. and then uh, up in Green Bay as well? A little bit, yeah. Okay. And a lot, actually, more in the Eagle River area. Oh, okay, yeah. okay. And uh, so what's going, what are you setting up there? Are you sending kegs, bottles? Uh, kegs up there, kegs? some bottles, okay. um, pretty much whatever they want. But uh, we tell them, we lay out the catalog. I got 12 different beers to choose from. Say, hey, here's what we got. What do you want? Okay, so now, you know, like I said, it's eight months you've been doing this. Has has your approach changed any? Or, I mean, how, how has this affected you as a brewer, this whole thing? <laughs> well, it's fun. I mean, my pilot system is a 15-barrel batch. <laughs> so I mean, I'm about to brew a cookies and milk stout. Cookies Never done that on a stout. small batch right. or anything, but I'm gonna do it on just 15 and just straight up it. 15 barrels. Well, I did that with the bitch and heat too. I never brewed that before, and it turned yeah. out phenomenal. Yeah. And I feel pretty confident in my ability to do that. So cool, yeah. cool. Well, I mean, you look at the production numbers for the brewery, and they're just continually rising. You know, mm -hmm. you guys are all putting more and more beer, and you had a really busy summer. It yeah, seemed to me every was, time I was in here, it was it like, was crazy. I actually remember driving back from golf with my buddy Andy and we're just coming and we're going down the highway and we get over the hill and we're like, holy shit, the lot is full. And it was like a Sunday afternoon, yeah. like, it's just packed here. Yeah. It's pretty cool to see that. Well, and I mean, one of the like really noticeable changes is when you come through the door and you see these tap handles. Mm -hmm. Now, when it started out, you guys had kind of a mix, half and half maybe, mm -hmm. of bare bones beer and then other people's uh, beer on tap. Now it's almost all bare bones. Yeah, we got this small little cooler, which eventually is gonna house pilot, really small pilot batches that uh, my assistant brewer Jody's gonna brew. Jody and, Cleveland? Yep, Jody Cleveland. Yeah. And uh, he's gonna be doing, just trying to keep this little kegerator full with six tools of fun new beer. And uh, then my job is to keep this full with our stuff. But uh, we got a tribute on right now. Yeah. It's good stuff. Oh yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We love tribute, our customers love tribute, so every now and then we'll put that on. Well. I can't have beer sitting in front of me like no, this. No, I can't. <laughs> so one of the things, like, um, when I look around, uh, you know, when you look at, like, beer geek forums, you know, where people are shattering, the one thing that people are saying about bare bones, they're talking about hoppy beers, mm -hmm. you know, and that's really... That's, that's my forte. That's what you come from, right? That's right. I'm all about the hops, and, I mean, and no disrespect to, like, other breweries, I just haven't found hoppy beers that I've really been fond of yet around here mm -hmm. i mean there's a bunch of great other styles amber barrel aged beers other styles like that but when it comes to really hoppy beers there's a couple that come to mind and i just wanted to make some really awesome delicious hoppy beers for me <laughs> and this one here is uh well you said oh so this is wicked badass wicked badass that, yeah. uh they're saying i mean the blurb on uh on your tap list says cascadian dark ale yeah just for fun just to see what the beer geeks say yeah <laughs> I, I think of it as a hoppy porter yeah it's more of like a porter that i dry hop the shit out of um my most black ipas i've had have kind of lacked in that body that mouthfeel that roastiness all of that and i wanted to make a big porter and dry hop the shit out of it and put a lot of hops throughout the boil and let it really blend with the malt so what hops are you using here um, nuggets and Galenas and Centennials. Galena? Yep. Cool. All collectively. All nice. collectively, nice. too. It's not like one hop strike is a nugget, one is this. It's all throughout. Well, it worked out really well. I mean, I like, uh, we were talking about this earlier, I like the way the, <clears throat> there's roast here, you know, but there's enough malt flavor that kind of rounds everything out mm -hmm. with those hops. It's uh, really a satisfying beer. 
Oh, yeah. What is it, a 6.9%? Yeah. So it's not killer. I mean, it's got something going on. Yeah. Very delicious beer. Um, so, like, now that you're through summer, you know, you're going to have winter coming up. Are you, uh, any plans for special beers for the winter? Um, cookies and milk stout. Cookies That's and gonna milk That's going to be stout. fun. Okay. Actually, Alex from Lion's Tail and I are going to do an Imperial Stout together. Excellent. And it's going to be outrageous. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be fun. And we got some special ideas, including a barrel, but I'm not going to spill the beans yet on that. You'll nice. see when it comes out. Nice. So when is the, the Lion's Tail collaboration going to happen? Um, we're going to do that in December for a January release. Cool. Will that be brewed here or yep. up at their place? Oh, nice. Brewed here and, uh, yeah, it's going to be a crazy time. Just a 15-barrel batch and yeah. get really wild with it. Something big. Excellent. Excellent. Lots of sugars. Um, okay, so we got to get to another beer here, too. Um, this other one here, i got to have another drink of this. This is <laughs> it's excellent. Like that one. So this is Feed the Dog, mm -hmm. and this is a Scotch Ale, Yep. a wee heavy, and it's more than a little wee heavy. Well, it's 9%. 9%, it's yeah. It's just a modest 9. Big malt aroma coming up out of that thing. Mm -hmm. A lot of caramel in here, huh? Yeah, there yeah. is. Yep. There's really only four types of malt in here, though. It's tasty. No. I mean, that beer is deceptive, because at 9%, it doesn't it's drink. It's so smooth. Yeah, it doesn't yeah. drink that heavy, you but. know. I tell everybody when I first came out with this, I, I tested it, I gave it the run, and I drank, I don't know, five or six of these little cups. And I was hammered. <laughs> five or six little cups. Of these little guys, you know? Yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of alcohol in that thing. Yeah. Um, but you don't pick that up. I mean, I don't get any heat from it, you know? No, it's really smooth. It is. And I feel like maybe the malt helps cover it. Like, I don't know, it's just, it's full of flavors. Yeah. And... Yeah, it's really nice. Um, so, so this is named Feed the Dog after a band that's from this area. Yep, an Oshkosh band, Feed the Dog. They're like a rock and roll bluegrass band. Rock and roll bluegrass, right. And um, you're going to be, pl well, they're playing, uh, that's November 11th at, yep. at the Ruby Owl. Uh, Feed the Dog will be playing. They'll have Feed the Dog on tap. And then you're also going to be playing that. Yep, band. yep. And then Timmy from Feed the Dog will be joining me. Cool. And, uh, we're going to play a little bit of a different vein than Feed the Dog music, but it'll still be a lot a lot of fun. Excellent, excellent. So you'll be playing your songs? Yep. Nice, nice. That's right. So that uh, starts at 8 p.m. Yep. on Friday, November 11th at the Ruby. That's right. Cool. It's going to be crazy. So how much of this are you going to drink beforehand? Ha. <laughs> we'll see. you got to take it easy on this one. <laughs> Come out to the show and find out. Yeah. Okay, RJ, <laughs> cool. Well, I'll see you there Friday. Oh, yeah, cheers. All right, thanks.